Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Kirloskar Oil Engine Limited Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference, all hosted by Antic Stock Brokers. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now end the conference. Over to Miss. Mr. Amit Shah from Antique Stock Booking. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, Aditya. Uh, good evening, everyone. On behalf of uh, Antique Stock Booking Limited, I welcome you all to the post earnings call uh, of Kirloskar Oil Engines Limited uh, to discuss the results we have with us, uh, senior management team of the company, uh, represented by Ms. Gauri Kirloskar, managing director of the company, Mr. Rahul Sahai. CEO of B2B Business, Mr. Asim Shrivastav, CEO of B2C Business, Mr. Sachin Kejriwal, CFO of the company. Uh, I'll hand over the call to Ms. Gauri Karloskar for her opening remarks, post which we can open the floor for uh, question and answer. Uh, over to you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good evening to all of you. This is Gauri Karloskar, Managing Director of Karloskar Oil Engine. Thank you all for joining the call today. Uh, besides the people already mentioned, we also have on the call Smita Raishikar, Company Secretary, and Amit Gupta, who is the CFO of ARCA. I will start with the business updates first, followed by a financial overview by Sachin, and then we can open the floor for a Q&A session. I am happy to report that we continue to surpass records in this quarter. We recorded the highest ever quarter one sales for COEL at 1,334 crores, crore rupees. This is 6% higher than the Q1 of last year. Please note that the first quarter of last year witnessed pre-buy in the view of emission norm changes. So the 6% growth over that number is, I believe, a commendable achievement. I would like to congratulate our whole team on these results. If we take back the effect of the pre-buy from last year, then the Q1 revenue growth is 18%. All of the business units except farm mechanization have grown double digit compared to last year, excluding the pre-buy effect of the uh, first quarter of last year. On margin, EBITDA was at 198 crore rupees, which reflects a 14.7% margin. It is 250 basis points higher than the quarter uh, one last year. Please note that we have recovered the provisions we had made last year, and this number, which is 14.7%, is reflective of that. So overall, if you look at the net profit, COEL standalone was at 135 crore rupees, which is 30% higher than the Q1 of the previous year. Now coming to business updates, the demand continues to stay strong. On the B2B segment, we are concentrating on our technology tracks to solid solidify our position as a leader in power and energy systems. Uh, from a business, business perspective, at a standalone level, we achieved sales of 1,152 crore rupees, re representing a 5% year-on-year growth, despite an exceptionally strong first quarter last year that experienced significant pre-buy demand. On the power gen side, we have successfully transitioned to the new emission regime by ramping up our CPCD 4 plus engine production capacity. We now boast one of the largest CPCD 4 plus certified portfolios in the industry. Additionally, we have received certification for natural gas genset nodes, advancing our flexible fuel strategy. We are expanding our Opti Prime range of gensets as we continue to introduce new power solution products for our customers. The industrial segment experienced substantial growth of approximately 38% year-on-year, driven by strong demand from our construction OEMs. We are also making good progress with the upcoming CEV BS5 emission changes, conducting field trials in, in collaboration with our OEM partners. The distribution and aftermarket business recorded a 14% year-on-year growth as we focus on enhancing service penetration and improving the service capabilities of our channel partners. Lastly, the drive to increase our presence internationally has started yielding results with our international business growing by 23% year-on-year. We are working with our international partners to increase reach and deepen our service presence to drive growth. 
Coming to the B2C business, at a standalone level, we recorded sales of 182 crore rupees, which is a 14% growth year on year. WMS, or water management uh, solution sales, grew at 20% year on year, while farm mechanization sales underwent degrowth. Exports in the B2C standalone were at 10 crore, which has almost doubled from the last um, Q1 of the last year. I will now talk about the consolidated business updates. Revenue from operations was at 1,636 crore rupees, which is a 6% growth year on year. For the B2C segment, one of the key events this year is shifting of the manufacturing facilities to Sanan. We are moving ahead as planned, and we expect to complete this in, um, in the second quarter. Coel WMS has grown by 20% year on year. The export sales for, of sales growth number is at 11% over Q1 of last year. Both Coel WMS and LGM reported double-digit EBITDA. Our financial services business, Arka Revenue, was at 163 crore rupees, which is a 27% growth year on year. The assets under management, as on June 30th, 2024, stood at 5,768 crore rupees. With the key business updates completed, I would now like to touch upon the strategic growth path of 2x3y. As we enter the final year of this journey, we at COEL are fully committed to the growth path we set for ourselves. Despite some changes in our year-on-year -year journey due to last-minute changes in the CPCV 4 plus deadline, we have managed these changes well and maintained our focus on overall growth. This growth encompasses not only the top line, but also advancements in technology, uh, more R&D efforts, and accelerated introduction of new products. This shift is not re just reflected in our financial performance, but also an internal transformation of our operations. As you know, over the past two years, we have restructured our business, reinforced our group values, and cultivated a strong cult company culture. This transformation has prepared, prepared us not only for the 2x3y journey, but for the longer path that lies ahead. As I spoke in my last call as well, at COEL, our aim is to transform from an engine manufacturing company to a technological leader in power and energy systems. So on this call in the beginning of the year, I would like to give you an update on what we want to aim for as a company in the next five years. If you look at the last slide in our investor presentation online, you will see that our ambition is to be to be, which reads as our ambition to be $2 billion by fiscal year 30. If you look at the levers that we will leverage to achieve our 2B2B strategy, our core manufacturing strategy is something that we will focus on. This includes make versus buy decisions, what to source, what to machine, and what capacity levels we want to have. On the B2C side, we have a new plant that will get commissioned this quarter, and with that, we will have enough capacity to take us on this journey. In the 2x3y strategy, we had come out with four technology tracks, and we had shown a roadmap as far as these technology tracks are concerned. I keep saying that at the heart of it, we are an engineering company, which also manufactures and sells, and our focus on R&D will stay, and we will continue to invest in R&D. We are excited to be part of this transition that our industry is seeing, and we believe that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make a difference to the world and the communities that we serve. We will also look for inorganic growth opportunities as we go along, but we are clear on what fits our strategy and what will not, and we will grow only in areas where we have core competence and where it makes sense to enter. As you know, we have a healthy balance sheet, and we will make sure that we invest with prudence. Our international strategy will continue. We have made significant progress. And it is our aspiration that our international portfolio is at 30% of the overall pie. We have made good progress in the last two years. Uh, we have made some strategic moves, and we will continue this focus. We will also focus on completing the product portfolio in the B2C business, and we will make sure that this business grows as well. Now I will hand over the call to Sachin for a quick financial overview. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Corey, for the update. I will now run through the financial performance for standalone and consolidated business. As you see from the numbers 
Q1 top line registered growth year on year despite of the pre buy reflected in numbers for Q1 of last year. This is now eight quarters in a row that we have crossed 1000 crores in revenue from operations. Coming to the financial performance, I will start with the standalone performance first. Revenue from operation at 1343 crores for Q1 FI25 versus 1265 crores for Q1 financial at 24, which is 6% increase year on year. If we remove the effect of pre buy sales from Q1 last year, then Q1 FI25 performance reflects 18% growth year on year. EBITDA at uh, rupees 198 crores for Q1 FI25 versus 155 crores for Q1 FI24, which is 28% increase year on year. EBITDA margin at 14.7% for Q1 FI25 versus 12.2% for Q1 FI24. Net profit at 135 crores for Q1 FI25 versus 103 crores for Q1 FI24, which is 30% increase year on year. Our net cash on cash equivalent at the end of Q1 FI25 was 410 crores versus 269 crores at the end of the previous quarter. The working capital as at quarter end 38 June has seen an increase of 135 crores as we are gearing up for production ramp up in CTCD 4 plus regime. However, we continue to grow our net cash position which stood at in excess of 400 crores. Now here is the further breakdown of the standalone sales. The B2B sales were at 1,152 crores. That is 5% growth year on year. Within B2B target was at 528 crores which was 13% decline year on year. Excluding pre buy in previous year, it is 10% increase year on year. Industrial stands at 320 crores, that is 38% growth year on year. Distribution and aftermarket was at 198 crores, 14% growth year on year. And IBG, that is international business of B2B, was at 106 crores and with 23% growth year on year. The B2C sales were at 182 crores, registering 14% growth year on year. And within B2C, WMS was at 155 crores, that is 20% growth year on year. International business of B2C was at 10 crores, that is 100% growth year on year. And FMS business at 17 crores, witnessed a 34% degrowth year on year. Now looking at the consolidated performance for the quarter, Revenue from operation at 1,636 crores for Q1 FI25 versus 1,543 crores for Q1 FI24, which is 6% increase year on year. Net profit at 157 crores for Q1 FI25 versus 126 crores for Q1 FI24, which is 25% increase year on year. Let us have a look at consolidated segment performance now. B2B segment revenue for the quarter was at 1,156 crore, which is 5% growth year on year. The segment pivot was at 157 crore, reflecting a 90% increase year on year. B2C segment revenue for the quarter was at 317 crore, which is 2% growth year on year. The segment pivot was at 27 crore, up by 53% year on year. Financial service segment revenue for the quarter is at 163 crores, reflecting 27% year on year growth. The segment pivot was at 19 crores, that is 11% decrease year on year. In conclusion, we are quite pleased with our performance this quarter. Looking ahead, our outlook for the upcoming quarter is cautiously optimistic as we navigate the market with the introduction of fully transitioned CPCB 4 plus market for power gen. Overall, as we continued on our long-term journey, the entire OL team is enthusiastic about the path ahead. We are also pleased to inform you that our long-term debt credit rating has been upgraded to AA plus by Crystal, and our short-term credit rating continues to be highest at A1 plus. 
now we will open the forum for q and a session thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and do participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles Our first question is from the line of Rishabh from Sachiti Family Office. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, am I audible? Yes. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so for the segmental revenue you share, uh, data center related revenue uh, comes in power generation, right? So I wanted to understand how much portion of power generation revenue is linked to data centers. Uh, hi, Rishabh. So this is Rahul. Uh, I wouldn't be in a position to give out a specific number, but uh, from a business standpoint, we are focused on the data center segment. Uh, today, it is not extremely significant for us. Going forward, given the product ranges that we've entered into, it will be far more significant. All right. So you know, uh, for a one megawatt data center, capex, let's say forty CR. How much expense is attributable to what we sell for a data center, right? That is a genset. Uh, so, how much for that, and uh, what is the life of such a genset? And once installed, uh, do we have any kind of revenues we are able to make in terms of operations or maintenance? Yeah. So, if you look at an overall capex of data center, and I mean, I, I just broadly respond because. I may not be in a position to give out specific numbers here. Absolutely. Uh, but data center buys a variety of different power backup solutions, and gensets are part of those. Uh, gensets are critical for data centers for their uptime certification or data center certification. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, uh, like I said earlier, uh, we are developing a range that will. Allow us to be far more aggressive in the segment, and over a lifetime, once you have sold the genset, uh, you can accompany that with different kind of maintenance contracts, which will also allow for the annuity business. Hmm. No, that's fine. But you know, uh, let's say a data center, one megawatt data center. How like what would be a typical expense which a data center would be incurring on a genset? Like that is not confidential, right? That you can tell. Any broad numbers, sir? Hello. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, so, uh, is this information that you know I may not have handy like this, but I'm sure it's available and you check it online. So, uh, uh, you know, may not be as directly relevant to this conversation. All right, got it. You know, also I wanted to understand: Have we explored exporting gensets? Uh, For data center usage abroad, and uh, like, uh, what are the main players who are in the export business internationally for that? And uh, any cost difference or quality difference we have versus uh, competitors abroad? Uh, so thanks for asking that question. Uh, like I was saying, that we are focusing on products that go into data centers. Uh, we are aware of the competition. So you have, you know, all the large engine manufacturers. Focusing on data centers, we are very aware that it's a growing market. Uh, if we go into the market, depending on what market it is, we will be able to have varying value proposition. Cost leadership could be one of the value propositions, but product differentiation is also something that we are focusing on. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, uh, just one question: What is the life of these genses? Like, how many years? So I could take a thumb rule of about 15 years. 15 years, and you know what kind? Like, do we give like what kind of operation and maintenance kind of uh, business is related to these genses? Uh, if you can tell a bit about that. What kind of operation and maintenance? You are asking. Like service revenue. Yeah, service revenue. Uh, once it is installed, uh, what kind of service revenues do we see uh, from it? Let's say uh, in a data center which has taken your genset. Yeah. So, I, um, are you expecting an answer in terms of percentage of capex? 
Yeah, a percentage of capex or some qualitative insights on that, uh, some numbers if possible. So there are varying levels of annuity based contracts that we can sign with the customer. So it's slightly complicated, but uh, in terms of being able to answer that directly, but the scope of the contract would define that. And the level of uptime that we sign would also define that. So the scope could vary from, you know, just ensuring that the parts are supplied on time and there is a person showing up at the maintenance intervals that we've committed to. And from there, it could vary to placing people on site to ensure that the 24-7, uh, you know, uh, uptime is ensured. So it varies a lot. All right. Uh, you know, just one last question. So I understand that higher... Sure. Please limit your question to two per participant. Should have a All question, right. then we request you to rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hi. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. So uh, my first question is, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, when we look at the end market right now, how is the demand environment you are seeing, you know, uh, as this transition is happening to CPCB4? So maybe if you can just give some color from the various end markets perspective, the demand, you know, or the inquiry pipeline. And the second question is in terms of the inventory at the OEM level, as we would have, you know, exhausted all the inventory and the refilling will start happening for CPCB4 related, you know, gensets, how that, you know, uh, inventory refilling will happen. And, uh, you know, based on all these things, how can we see the market growth rate for the domestic power genset market? That's the question. Uh, hi, Mr. Abu. So uh, if I look at, and I'll answer the, CPCB4 ramp up with our GOEMs first. Uh, just in this last quarter, we ramped up to very close to our normal CPCB2 numbers with CPCB4. Now, uh, the inference from that is that since the primary billing is happening, the demand continues to be strong because we operate on replenishment model, theory of constraints. From a lead standpoint, and these are end customer leads, we are not seeing any major changes in terms of demand signals. So the demand continues to be strong. Uh, gensets continue to be uh, level to backup for critical infrastructure projects. And we are not seeing any softening happening. We are keeping a close eye on market development, but at this point, we see that uh, market continues to be strong. And uh, Raul, thanks for that answer. Uh, from the you know market growth perspective, is there a number you know for the full year in terms of what the kind of market growth what we can expect? Um, so, from an uh, overall business, we remain pretty committed to the two x three y. So that's the proxy that you can uh, take. Got it. And on the spare parts business, if you can touch upon that, you know, with the CPCB4 compliance, uh, you know, increasing and uh, the entire transition happening, how do we see the spares business, you know, growing over the next, you know, two to three years? What could be the growth trajectory uh, in the spares business as more and more now gensets come to the, uh, you know, OEMs or more get, you know, serviced by our own service partners rather than going outside? So how does that, you know, positively impact the service business? Right. So uh, you're right. It will definitely positively impact the service business. Now, that is a function of two things. One is the technology becoming more complicated. So that's from the market side. And the second thing that we're doing is we are also ramping up on our service channel capabilities. So there is some restructuring work that we're doing there as well to ensure that we're able to respond to our customers in time. Now, if you look at the last quarter's performance of our aftermarket business, it is substantial double-digit growth. And that is primarily because of these two key uh, initiatives.
got it uh, thanks for taking my questions i'll circle back in the queue thank you thank you our next question is from the line of ankit from subcom ventures please go ahead yeah uh, good evening sir a couple of questions uh, as you mentioned that we are committed on this uh, 2x three rights uh, you know uh, strategy just wanted to confirm so you know uh, this year our guidance was to achieve a revenue of 6500 crore at the standard in level so uh, uh, given the q1 performance and the uh, you know the ask rate which is required in the next you know, nine months are you still confident of achieving this uh, guidance of 6500 crore revenue at standard in this year um so 2x three y is an ambition and all our actions are towards achieving that ambition uh and i think that is where i would leave it we will try and ensure that we get to that number or we get as close to that number as possible okay okay that's helpful uh, second question is sir uh, you mentioned your 2030 mission so if you can just break up this uh, 2 billion revenue target uh, between the product side and the arca side what would be the uh, uh, difference i mean what would be uh, the revenue of these two businesses and also you mentioned that there could be some inorganic uh, uh, activities also so excluding the inorganic part also what kind of uh, revenue are looking at from the product business yeah thanks for your question um, you know first i just want to state that um, again the five year target is an ambition um, okay. so that's number one and uh, If you look at the slide that we put up online, we have talked about some of the strategic levers that we will focus on uh, to get to that kind of growth. So we're very clear as a team where we need to focus. I'm not going to at this point be able to give you a business-wise breakup. So what I can say is that most of the growth uh, achieved will be on the B2B side. And if you look at the uh, growth rates that we've achieved historically over the last two years, that's the sort of trajectory that we would expect. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, the detail that we want to provide has been provided in the slide, uh, and it's really going to be impossible for me to dwell further than that because even if you look at 2x, 3y. Uh, when we had announced it two years ago, we had actually specified certain, say, buckets of revenue. Uh, as a bridge if you look back the way it's panned out is quite different uh, so so yeah that's about the details that i can give you right now no, actually both the businesses are totally different you know one is financial services and one is a product company so just a broad break up between these two segments will be okay at say 80 20 80 then okay thank you and and finally on the margin side uh, i mean and this, you know the standard and business uh, margins are at around 13% level at the beta so uh, going forward what is your outlook on that um, with this cpcd four products now coming in the the price increases which you guys have taken so where do you see the margins in this business yeah so uh, i mean there is no specific margin guidance that we can give at this point we are closely evaluating the market dynamics play out it's too early the second thing is that our focus areas for margin expansion remain the same uh, that is focusing on high cost power products focusing on our international business and focusing on after market okay that's all so thank you so much Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Jitu Punjabi from EM Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. <clears throat> um, the, thanks, Gauri, Rahul, and team. Uh, great numbers, uh, great going. Uh, two questions. One, you know, the international side numbers have been pretty good. Twenty-three percent growth. Uh, love to hear a little more color on. what's working within that what's not working within that and do you think that uh, this growth rate can sustain over the next 12 months uh, i need to see rahul so uh, 
so thank you for your compliment um we are very focused on the international side and uh, what we are doing is we are taking a very close look on the kind of competition we have the kind of product that we need to create to win in those markets and most importantly what is the channel and distribution distribution structure that we need to have so if you for a moment look at the investment that we made in engines lpg llc uh, that is wildcat the brand mm-hmm. uh, that is an outcome of one such analysis and it is part of our america's strategy mm-hmm. so uh, there are different strategic moves we are making in different markets uh they seen a positive payback of those initiatives and which is reflecting in some of the growth that we are seeing uh, and we remain pretty committed to that thought process uh, because unlike india and while we club it as international business but each of these countries are fairly unique with their own dynamics and a thorough evaluation is needed so that's basically where we are so we are being very very deliberate about that process okay thanks uh, the second question is arka we're at a 5700 crore balance sheet there aum there uh, what is the plan going forward and uh, would do you think that be some kind of uh, i don't know how to say spin off or whatever activity over there that we had talked about earlier yeah uh, thanks chitu for the question uh, amit do you want to uh, you want to answer and i can supplement if required uh sure ma'am i take that particular question so jitu sir thanks for the question uh at as on 30 june 2024 the aum of arca stands at 5768 currently the capital adequacy and the capital requirement for the company is quite adequate enough to consider for it a future year of operation uh my view you are highlighting more towards the recapitalization or further capitalization for which currently considering the debt of the company we are still under levered as far as the 30 june position is considered so currently on an immediate basis we don't see further any requirement from that point of view okay no i was more alluding to saying that uh, this company can stand on its own feet after it touches 5000 crores yeah and more so, alluding to that point yeah so yeah. more to what we are working on that direction only uh ma'am here if you can pitch in little bit uh, G- uh, Jitu, the you know the way i would say, say it here is that you know these are conversations that happen um uh, and will keep happening but it's uh, it's a timing issue it's uh, depending on external circumstances and what we feel is best for the company at a certain stage so what i'm saying is not off the table but uh, when there's the adequate update it's only then that i can give it to you Okay. Perfect. Then a good wishes and thank you so much. Good wishes to the team. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Anupam Goswami from Ubi Life. Please wait. Sorry, we can't hear you. Aditya, we can't hear you. Anupam Goswami. Thank you. Hello, uh, ma'am. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. My first question is on the uh, how much of you mentioned about focusing your um, improving margin improvement by focusing on high horsepower products. How much are we doing in terms of revenue in that segment, and what's our target in that? That is uh, number one question. And second would be uh, we now uh, have seen a CPC before proper transition. and from now onwards uh, what are the kind of market share are we currently having and what sort of gain are we looking at and how do we uh, you know place ourselves in a leading position over there if we can just touch upon that thank you yeah uh, so uh, what i would say is that to answer the first part of the question if i look at i hot power uh i will classify high hot power as above 750 kva in the power generation market and in that market we have very minimal market share so that's a, almost like a blue ocean for us uh if i look at 750 to 1010 that market share would roughly be around 15 or 20 so uh 
as we build out our portfolios, that's a clear opportunity for us. Overall, if I look at power generation, our market share is currently between 29 to 30 percent, so about a third of the market. And in CPCB4, we have an entirely certified built out portfolio that spans across the diesel and natural gas CPCB4 certified. So we are hoping to gain market share with the range that we have. Do we see any consolidation happening in this uh, market share? As in, uh, do we gain market share from the smaller players, or are we more advantageous in this too? Let's say for only the leaders, uh, since the technology is a little complicated in that sense. So, uh, consolidation or some amount of consolidation may happen below 250 kVA, which is where bulk of the smaller or fringe players operate. Uh, but I don't necessarily foresee much consolidation happening beyond 250 kVA. Okay, and uh, just last, if you can squeeze in, uh, since you mentioned about improving your uh, margins, where do we see the margins from here? What sort of a room do we have in your uh, 2030 sort of plan, $2, two billion? Uh, so we remain committed to double digits. Uh, there is no specific number that we're giving out at this stage. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Anandaki Nikki. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Prolin Nandu from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, thank you so much for taking my question. Uh, I'm sorry to again, uh, you know, probe you further on the margin part. Now, I'm, I'm not asking you for a guidance, right? But if I look at your Q1 margin uh, for B2B business, and if I call out the uh, one-time provision, uh, there is a year-on-year -year decline in margins. Uh, and the three tailwinds that you mentioned, Rahul, uh, you know, in terms of international, there's a second was spare parts, and the third, uh, or maybe after sales, and the third was higher HP. Both, are, I mean, all three are in a way uh, a tailwinds for us, right? All three are in a way growing at a faster pace than overall number. Uh, despite that, uh, this margin decline, uh, if you can explain this, and uh, again, uh, you know, maybe for the rest of the year or for the next uh, couple of years, would there be, a, a, I mean, more like a tailwinds to this margins level that we are currently, or what are the headwinds, right, if you can explain as we go into FY25 and 26? That's, that's my number one question. Um, so thank you for that question. Um, I, am, I don't think there is any uh, margin decline so, uh, what data are you stating? I'm I'm removing the one-off provision from this quarter's number, and then I'm, I'm looking at the B2B margin. Uh, as per my calculation, that is 11.53, and last year for the same quarter, that was 12.69. Even if I look at the standalone numbers, right, which was there in your slide, uh, uh, the I mean, I'm not, I don't have that right now in the front of me, uh, but that also is, uh, you know, uh, not, so, 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 I mean, just to probably, uh, uh, you know, just see, this, if you remove the one-off, right, I mean, the provision, this is the number that I am getting. Uh, so that's the base on which I had this question. So, so there was a decline of 40 basis point in the margin, and that was a mixed impact uh, which will be recovering in the subsequent quarters. Because uh, as we are moving towards CPCP 4 Plus, which is a high margin business, so we'll improve from there on. Oh, okay. So you are saying that uh, uh, in the base quarter, the mix of CPCB was higher than what it is in uh, this quarter? Sorry, can you repeat? No, I'm saying that you are saying uh, the, the 40 bits uh, decline in margin was because of the mix being adverse. Uh, and as we move towards CPCB4, uh, the margins will improve. So when I when you're looking at the base quarter, uh, you know, from where on that 40 bits this decline has happened, uh, was the proportion of CPCB4 in our overall mix higher than what it is in the current quarter? 
So our last quarter, the CPCB four was higher compared to the same oh. quarter last year. Having said that, there is also a mix of LHP versus HHP. So that is what we are talking about. This is a product mix change. There is nothing significant from a business operation standpoint that is leading to a margin, a 40 basis point margin difference. Right. Okay. All right. Because, you know, if I look at your peer, uh, right, and it's only fair for us to, you know, compare it with uh, their peer, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably shown a significant increase in margins, uh, right? Uh, so that was the base of this question, but I understood. So so going ahead, Rahul, the, uh, the conclusion is that there would be this, this three, uh, uh, you know, levers that you have uh, talked about. Or would work in our favor, right, as we go ahead in FI25 and FI26 as well. Is that a fair conclusion to make? So that is fair. See, also one point to note is same time last year, we had three buy happening. So there was, I mean, so the mix changes there. There was also some slight improvement on operating leverage. So, I mean, some of those factors were there, but uh, what I would say is it's not significant. It's not something that we need to be worried about going forward. Sure. No, so that's it from my side. Uh, all the best, team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mohit Pandey from McQuery Group. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope I'm audible. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. So, uh, firstly, my first question was on the demand, and so in response to one of the earlier questions, you indicated demand uh, continues to be strong. So, it could give a more color around uh, any particular end markets that uh, uh, hold out. Uh, is it like manufacturing or uh, uh, property where you're seeing the strongest demand? Anything that stands out uh, for PowerGen? Sure. So we are seeing strong demand from infrastructure and construction segment across our power generation as well as our industrial business. And uh, also if you look at some other uh, end markets like the uh, railways, so we are seeing significant opportunities, defense. Uh, so we are seeing strong opportunities across the board. I mean, I am naming some key segments for us. Uh, no. Okay, so my question was particularly uh, for the CPCD4 offerings. So CPCD4 offerings go into all of these, right? Is that uh, understanding correct? And PowerGen? Yeah, so uh, I think th so. this current quarter will be the first quarter of 100% CPCD4. I would probably be in a better position to answer that question perhaps similar time but next quarter. Sure, sure. And secondly, if you could uh, help us understand what would be the average price hike uh, uh, like to like uh, city city four versus the previous products now? Uh, sure. Uh, so we're seeing about 30 to 40 percent price change. There is significant scope addition, and uh, we are closely watching the market dynamics play out. So uh, so we are we are being fairly cautiously optimistic as far as uh, power generation is concerned. Understood, sir. And the last question is on the capacity addition uh, uh, announced uh, in the press release. So, so this capacity would get uh, added by what time frame and uh, where, ex which uh, uh, segment of the market will it cater to? Uh, 50,000. So uh, you heard our managing director talking about the $2 billion uh, dollar, uh, ambition that we have. In light of that, for specific product ranges, especially on the high horsepower, to augment our existing capacities, we have worked on this uh, proposal and been approved by the board. So that, that's where we are focusing on. So we are gearing up for the next five years, and bulk of this execution is going to happen over the next two to three years. Okay, sir. Uh, so uh, 
so is it fair to assume that uh, commissioning will happen over next two to three years, uh, or is, is there a phase-wise commissioning plan as well uh, for this new facility? So all the execution is going to happen over the next two to three years. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, and lastly, just a clarification. So most of the business right now is under 800 kg, right? So is that a right understanding from one of the previous questions on power gym? So our, our existing range starts from 3 kVA and goes to 3000 kVA with OptiPrime. Uh, with a single engine option, it goes to 1500 kVA. So uh, we have, including OptiPrime, a range that starts at 3 kVA, goes to 3000 kVA. Um, so yeah. Understood, sir. Understood. And lastly, if it is possible, so you spoke about four technology tracks, uh, right? So uh, uh, some color on the uh, on the progress there. Uh, that would be my last question. Thank you. Sure. So uh, I'll just give a quick, quick recap for everyone's benefit. Uh, we have four key technology tracks. The first track is on internal combustion. The second track is on energy solution. Uh, the third track is on electrification, and the fourth track is on hydrogen. And when I say hydrogen, I mean fuel cells and electrolyzers. So those are the four main tracks. In the last three years, we have made significant progress on the internal combustion track, which includes a patent on hydrogen internal combustion for power generation application. So we have the patent for India. If you look at the second track, we, are, we have built out our own proprietary microgrids and we are in process of launching that. If you look at the third track on electrification, we are already present in single phase motors and the ambition is to ramp up our capability. And if you look at the fourth track, there is significant work that we have done on the development side I'm not in a position to talk about it at this point. Uh, understood, sir. Thank you so much and wish you uh, all the very good. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is on the line of Sagar Parekh from 1UP Financials. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, team. Uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Uh, just uh, two questions. So first is uh, uh, you mentioned price hike of 30 to 40 percent, and you mentioned that the demand is uh, still strong. So does that mean that uh, the pricing uh, level would sustain at this level? Uh, we're keeping a close eye on this uh, because the existing, the current quarter that has started will be the first quarter of full CPCB 4 plus. Uh, market dynamics will evolve, so it's too early to comment on at this stage. Sure, but as of now, July has been o over and August is starting, so right now you're not seeing any kind of price pressure for now for CBCB4. Yeah, won't be able to comment at this stage, unfortunately. Okay, sure. And just my last question is on the follow-up on the capacity expansion, which we have announced of 700 crores, so uh, could you give some more color as to what kind of uh, you know, peak revenues and uh, is possible from this uh, additional capacity which we are putting up on 700 crores and also you said that it's largely to do with this HHP, uh, 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 you know, product. So, uh, you know, if you can give some color on margins also, would it be like better margins and and also this, like this car, current capacity is utilization is 70%. So, uh, you know, just some thought process on that also. We, we have enough uh, capacity available to expand uh, within our current uh, range, so. Yeah, thanks for that question. Uh, so all the investments that we are making is in line with the ambition that we have set out for over the next five years. Um, we stay committed to the double digit margin. The three focus areas remain consistent. So focusing on high horsepower, looking at international markets, and focusing on aftermarket. At this point, for us to be able to comment beyond that would be premature, and it's also slightly proprietary. So uh, I may not be able to comment beyond that at this stage. 
but any sort of color on what can be the revenues coming from this incremental expansion uh, so the overall five year revenue guidance has been provided yeah so it's in line with those uh, with the guidance okay sure that's it from my side thanks thank you our next question is from the line of tina from motilal oswal financial services please go ahead hi sir thanks for taking my question uh, i have uh, two three questions uh, one is related to again uh, margin so your b2c segment margins have been continuously improving over past couple of quarters maybe because of increased volumes where do we see uh, these margins uh, settling at uh, for the b2c division and what is driving this increase um, in in the margins apart from the uh, incremental volumes and better cost absorption is there any kind of price hike or is there any kind of incremental change in the product mix that you would have done in b2c segment yeah tina this is our team here so if you see uh, uh, two years back we came up with strategy called race you know so we worked on this uh, uh, reach which is about deepening and widening then agility then working on cash generation cost consciousness and also on people so that strategy is working fine for us and uh, because of that strategy our margin is improving continuously uh, we are now very close to double digit and uh, i think we'll continue to be at this level uh, going forward so this quarter margins were somewhere around uh, uh, 8.4% for the b2c division so you intend to take it to somewhere closer to around 10 to 11% going forward yeah that's our ambition okay and also sir on uh, cpcb 4 uh, plus uh, when you say that uh, you would gain margins over a longer period of time uh where is the scope or what is the scope of indigenization uh, in cpcb 4 plus because whatever cost increase that had happened in this transition uh this would have come in the price hike so uh, where would this incremental gain uh, come from when the market is uh, purely cpcb 4 plus based market going forward um so uh, to start off with uh, i think tina our existing portfolio is pretty heavily indigenized there is some work that we are doing on the electronics side which will further help but the big margin improvement as far as cpcb 4 plus is concerned will come in from the aftermarket and the kind of services that we can get from that uh, the existing cpcb 4 installed base so okay. that's the focus okay but that will start coming in only after a period of one one and a half year uh, uh, once once the uh, warranty or, or the inbuilt warranties uh, get over so yes in terms of the basic service service event it will start after the warranty period gets over you are correct got it got it and on the indigenization is there a scope of uh, another 5 7% more uh, cost uh, savings if you do uh, a little more indigenization or there is uh, no scope as of now so there is potential but i that's not something i would uh, you know specifically focus on at this point uh, the big focus has to be on the market side and uh, ramping up on cpcb4 got it sir got it and uh, just lastly on uh, this um, export growth and how is the traction of the opti prime uh, product in the domestic market particularly in fi24 and in uh, q1 of fi25 so exports we are seeing uh, pretty strong growth uh, and like i had mentioned in the call Uh, we are being extremely diligent and deliberate about the strategy we are deploying in each of the regions so uh, it has been slower than what we had initially planned for but we are confident that we are moving in the right direction um, uh, what was your second question um on the traction of opti prime product in 24 fi24 and in 1q of fi25 so uh, we are seeing uh, i mean 
Opti Prime is a relatively novel concept as far as the industry is concerned, and we have seen significant traction when we go and value sell the products. So there is an order board that we already have. and we remain committed to the opti prime range and we fully intend to leverage uh, you know the strategic advantage it gives us okay any number that you would contribute uh, to the uh, corresponding sales of this opti prime opti prime product last year any number any number that you would attribute to uh, the number of uh, uh, products sold in this uh, opti prime category uh, during fy24 or the number of uh... I, i wouldn't give out a specific number but what i can say is that we have last year we sold opti prime products right from 250 kva to 2000 kva okay and to okay. get or gain the confidence of a customer who is buying a 2000 kva genset uh, unless they are truly convinced about the product they won't purchase it right right and uh, even in the current quarter also we would have seen a similar kind of traction uh, for for this particular series correct so we are seeing we are seeing strong traction uh, we are focusing on variety of things opti prime is definitely one of them got it sir thank you this is from my side thank you na thank you our next question is from the line of saurabh arya from oakland capital please go ahead yeah hi am i audible yes you are audible yeah hi hi uh, thank you a uh, so couple of questions the first is uh, i need some clarity on capex number So for this year, capex was guided around 400 to 450 crores, and now we have announced this uh, three-year plan of 700 crores. So just uh, you know, some under just to get it better. So in so this year number already includes some number for three-year plan or not? No, sorry. So this 700 crores additional approval which we have received from the board will be a fresh investment over the next two to three years. Okay, that's fine. And second is uh, what I observe is last year domestic sales have gone down. So obviously that that also had impact on you know top line growth of the company. So any particular reason for that? Maybe is it related to shifting of factory etc. And second, when do we expect this normalization? Uh, so sort of if you see our main focus in LGM was uh, working on the Uh, margins and uh, what we have done we have uh, actually worked on product mix we have worked on international business and uh, uh, correcting some of the things that need to be corrected in lgm so in that process what has happened in uh, q1 our sales are slightly down but now going forward you will see improvement and we will be able to come back to decent growth in the domestic market also Okay, so from here on, Lagrangeer sales will improve only, even in domestic market, even though export has already been doing well. Yes. Okay, that is helpful. Maybe you know one, 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 two more version of questions if I can squeeze in. One is on this: what is the percentage of sales we had from CPCB four in this quarter? Um. So. in this last quarter our ppcb2 commitments to our customers remain to be strong so we were trying to fulfill all of that uh, ppcb4 was at approximately about 40% but going forward obviously it's going to be 100% of our uh, power gen portfolio sure and how did you could also comment on channel inventory so we can assume that you know channel inventory at this moment is very very low even for ppcb4 so at this point the channel inventory would so the channel would focus more on ppcb4 because we moved into 100% ppcb4 era and if you uh, look at the notification what it says is that post or as we entered this quarter 
it is oems or end customers or their suppliers which could be the channel or the respective geoems so everyone would try and optimize or minimize their ppcb2 inventory holding so the focus on ppcb4 plus is going to be there across the ecosystem sure okay yeah thank you thank you very much for the thanks sir thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for the day i now end the conference over to management for closing comments yeah thank you very much for hosting the call and thank you very much to all of the participants for dialing in and for all of your questions and interest in the co company see you next quarter thank you on behalf of antic stock broking that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may not disconnect your lines